Hello friends, today we will discuss about PKE and digital certificate. Myself Sanjay Kumar Das, a technology expert with more than 10 years of experience, welcome you to Canny Information Center. Let's begin. What is PKE? PKE means Public Key Infrastructure. What does that mean? It means it provides an infrastructure for secure communication between client and the server or a web browser and a web server. Now, many times people get confused between what is PKE and SSL. What is the difference between these two? Now let me explain it with the help of an example. For example, you are an employee and you want to enter your organization. What, is, what do you need? You need a security method that is your ID card to enter your organization. Now once you show your ID card to the organization, your organization has to check its database to see if your ID is actually valid or not. If it is validate, validated, then you are allowed to enter your organization. Correct? Now in this example, this ID card and the database storage where the company checks all these components that that is provided for this security mechanism is called PKA. So that is the infrastructure provided for security. Now what is SSL here? SSL here is complete process that you went to the company to show your ID card and then you entered your company in a safe, uh, you know, creating a safe passage between yourself and the company. So that process is called SSL. I hope you understood a little bit about the difference between PKI and SSL. Both are like a combined. I mean, the, you can say that those are brothers. Uh, one provides the infrastructure, one provides the process, right? Now we'll discuss about what are the components of PKI. PKI comprises of the certificate authority or the CA, and it comprises of the certificate distribution and revocation point, and the digital certificate containing the public key and the CS private key and the hardware security module where it uh, you know provides the security to store the private keys and stuff and the database where it stores the certificates right so these are the major components of PKA we'll discuss more about CA and CRL and OCSP what are these terminologies uh, after a little bit now we'll discuss about digital certificates what is a digital certificate Digital certificate is nothing but it's uh, you can consider it as a DN or driving license. It's a form of electronic identification of a website or an individual or a server or a client. Now since it is a digital identification, it needs to have certain format. What is that format? That format is called X509 format in which all the certificates are represented. Now what is the content of this certificate? Why, why do one need a certificate? Now for example, you are opening a website, how do you know that the credential that you are giving to someone that is an authenticated and a proper website or proper web server to which you are making a request. For that, it needs to give you one identity of itself which is verified by, the, by a legal entity so that you can uh, you know, believe in that and you can forward your credential to them. right? So a server should send you a certificate containing its public key and that server certificate should be signed by a legal en entity which can be believable that is a CA or a root CA. Now how does this uh, web servers or uh, you know a individual entity or a server gets this certificate from the root CA? One way is that they can create their own certificate that is called self-signed certificate or if they are using it for a commercial purpose and at a large scale they can you know purchase it from a legal entity uh, signed it from a legal CA that people can believe on. And the people has to pay certain amount of price for that, for getting the certificate for itself, for its use. Now let's dig a little bit deeper into the content of the certificate and how that is issued to a server or a web server. The server that needs a certificate is going to create a private and uh, public key of its own and that private key it is going to store it in its own uh, secured database or in a uh, secured place. right? And the public key along with certain more informations like its uh, organization name and address in the subject name, these two informations along with little bit uh, more information, it is going to go through a hash function and it is going to create a hash so that the integrity of that portion of data remains intact. And it is going to create a CSR of that and send it to the uh, you know, CA for signing it. Now the CA signs it using the CS private key and what it signs I mean uh, does it sign the content uh, of this uh, complete certificate no it is going to sign only the hash of that uh, data right now the CA signs that hash with its own private key since that CA is uh, trusted by most of the clients in the world 
wherever that certificate goes with this uh, sign the client will have the public key of the ca it can decrypt that certificate and know that this certificate is a valid certificate right and it came from a trusted source and after decrypting that or after decrypting that signature of the ca using the public key of the ca there will be that hash from that hash it will compute that the data content has not been tampered with i hope you understood a little bit about you know how a certificate works internally now in order to differentiate between the type of a certificate whether it is a ca certificate or it is a identity certificate it depend mostly depends on the key usage of that so how do you identify which if this certificate is a you know ca certificate or a uh, you know general identity certificate in the basic constraint inside the certificate it would have been mentioned that ca is equal to true for ca certificate and for normal identity certificate it would have been mentioned ca equal false by that you can identify that this certificate is meant for a identity identification purpose now with the public key that is there inside the certificate what can you do with that public key that usage will also normally be mentioned inside the certificate in the key usage you can see that the public key it will be used for encryption and signing and other things but in a ca certificate you will see it will be mentioned in the key usage it is used for signing purpose and for crl purpose now there are different kinds of uh, you know ssl certificates available in the world today depending on the level of security and trust it provides in the world first one is evssl that is extended validation certificate it is the highest level of security that it provides in terms of ssl uh, certificate by verifying the organization balance sheets uh, and um, you know a lot of different things got uh, gets verified it goes through a certain uh, steps and the second highest level of security is provided by ovssl that is organization validated uh, you know ssl certificate and that also goes through a you know certain amount of uh, procedure to get that uh, certificate from a ca and it goes through a physical verification as well but it is the second highest level of security that it provides and the third type of uh, you know certificate is dvssl that is called domain verified you know uh, ssl certificate and uh, they, here the domain is uh, verified and uh, and fourth type of certificate is basically wildcard certificates and this type of certificate are usually used by those organization which has different business running on the same domain name they can use the same certificate for providing security to different websites and fifth kind of uh, certificate is basically mdc or multi domain certificates what is the ca ca is basically a independent highest root of trust that you can say or it is the decision maker now a very common question that uh, comes into picture is how do you validate a ca certificate which actually is used to verify other certificates obviously that's a good question now that is the only certificate that has to be trusted explicitly either you get it physically or you believe it uh, you know uh, blindly or you you know have some secure channel to get that but that is the only certificate which you have to trust explicitly in today's world the browsers that come in uh, you know you install it they have a list of root ca already installed inside it so that they can verify it so it's really important that whatever browser you use it should be a well known browser so that you can trust on that that it will have a list of genuine root ca's and then later on if you try to install some other uh, root ca to that list you can add it explicitly what is crl crl is basically certificate revocation list and what does that mean it is basically a list of digital certificates that has been revoked by the ca before the scheduled expiry of that certificate or which should no longer be trusted now there are two types of uh, certificate that can come under that list one is irreversible certificates and one is hold certificate irreversible certificate means for example a root ca or a you know intermediate uh, ca has compromised its uh, primary key in that case all the certificate that it has issued should be put under crl second thing is for example you know some intermediate uh, ca have unauthorizedly kind of distributed certain certificate which it is not authorized to do that in that case those certificate will also be put into crl now which certificates are put on hold state 
those are very few cases one case of uh, that is basically if you have temporarily you were not finding that private key or of the server now you want uh, to put that thing into suspensor for certain number of time then you can put it into suspension for temporary purpose and then later once you have access to that uh, you know private key then you can remove it from that serial list now how does a browser or a client gets to know about you know once it gets the certificate and how does it validate that whether that certificate is in the CRL or not a CRL periodically synchronizes itself with the client to you know give the latest set of you know certificates that are in the CRL now this is a very clumsy and very heavy operation that usually happens for this purpose came OCSP OCSP means online certificate status protocol so this doesn't have to give you a list of certificate you just have to send a request that i have the certificate whether this is valid or not and that online server which which behaves as a ocsp server it can reply back with that whether it is valid or not so in real time it is more efficient and you do, do not have to store all the certificate in the crl correct so we will understand how this uh, client or a web browser verifies the certificate so there are three aspects on which the client verifies the certificate one is the verifying the integrity that integrity is verified using the root ca or the ca certificate and second thing is the timing whether it has uh, it has been expired or not it uses its own system time to check whether the certificate is valid or not valid and third aspect is the crl or ocsp validation that validation of the certificate should go through a, you know a, a process through which it can know that the certificate that it has received from the server whether it is valid or not now there is a concept called intermediate ca what is this intermediate ca so it is practically impossible for all the servers in the world to send the request to a root ca to get it signed it will have a very heavy load for that the ca can offload its work to few different subordinate cas or you can say you know intermediate cas now those intermediate ca how do you trust on this intermediate ca because the browser should be embedded with the root cas right now whenever you request a server certificate that server certificate is going to be signed by the intermediate ca and then that intermediate ca certificate will be signed by the root ca so there are two certificates that is that the browser is going to get one is the server certificate another is the intermediate root certificate right so whenever it tries to verify it first it verifies the intermediate uh, ca certificate using the root ca signature and then once the intermediate uh, certificate is verified using the intermediate certificate public key it is going to verify the server certificate now if the server certificate is valid then well enough it goes through two rounds of validation here so i hope you understood the purpose of intermediate ca's here so there can be many label of intermediate CS like this and the verification label goes like that. So certificate is basically associated with uh, two entities. One is the issuer, one is the subject. Issuer is nothing but the root CA which signs that certificate or the intermediate CA which signs that certificate. And second part of that certificate is the uh, subject which is basically the entity which owns that public key inside that certificate. Now with this, let me conclude my topic here. If you like my video, give a big thumbs up, share it as much as possible, subscribe it and don't forget to hit the bell button. Thank you.